I think I want to accomplish two things in this video today. First, can I carve a seat dish with my X-Carve CNC router? And B, is this called a seat dish? I feel like one day I just kind of started calling it a seat dish. I don't even know if that's correct. Um, let me know, weigh in on it. Anyways, if you've watched my video from a little while back when I made this dining chair, you'll remember that when I hand carved the seat dish, I used pretty thin stock and when I carved it out, the seat got really thin. So I've been wanting to redo the seat, make it a little bit thicker, and I figured this was a good time to work on my CNC skills. Now obviously I love handmade stuff, of course, and I love when you can tell that something's handmade. I think I often fall into the same trap that I'm sure many people do where we're chasing the perfection of something that's made by a machine. And I often have to remind myself that something made by hand doesn't necessarily have to look like it was made by a machine. But the one place that I haven't really been able to ignore chasing that machine-like perfection is when carving a seat dish. And I've even gotten pretty good at carving them by hand. I'm able to get consistent pretty good-looking results, but it's just one of those things where I want it to be just perfect or as close to perfect as I can get. So here we are. For this one, I'm obviously starting at the computer and to model the seat carving, I used Fusion 360. And this was actually one of the first things I modeled with Fusion when I first downloaded it. So. It ended up that I had to carve out quite a bit of time to get this right. I fumbled around with the program for, for quite a while before I, I figured it out. But what I eventually realized was that the carving on the seat is actually a portion of a sphere and a cylinder that are combined to create the shape of the seat dish. I then worked out a few different tool paths just to kind of experiment and see what would give me the best result. And then I of course exported all that G-code and then imported it into Easel and at that point I figured I might as well just give it a shot. I actually did my first test cut a few weeks ago, so don't be alarmed by Bearded Sean. Uh, I just threw together a alder blank to do my first test, so let's give it a try. you can tell but there's still a little bit of texture on the seat. I'm gonna make a couple tweaks, see if I can get a little smoother before I start sanding. So the first test carving was actually really successful. It really only took a bit of sanding to get it nice and smooth and I got a really nice clean line and a great looking seat carve. So now with the test cut out of the way, 
it was time to actually replace the seat in the chair, which is the reason why I'm in this whole mess in the first place. And the first step in all of this, of course, is to actually cut the old seat out of the chair. And that made me feel just a little bit nervous because I'm about to hack into this thing. Luckily I was able to remove the old seat and it now lives on my ceiling of shame with another failed furniture part. Just a friendly reminder for myself. So now that the old seat was removed, I then glued up a new walnut seat blank this time using six quarter lumber. And once it was planed and sanded, it ended up at about an inch and three eighths, which was plenty for a thicker seat and it was ready for carving. Now for the test carve, I did the entire thing with a round nose bit, but seeing as I like to keep things exciting, I decided for the real one, I would start with a straight bit and then finish with the round nose bit just to try something else, see if it was more efficient or see if I got a better result, just to kind of keep in the spirit of, of trying new things. Once the seat was done carving and I had sanded it all up, the only thing left to do was widen the dados in the leg assemblies to accept the thicker seat. And I actually filmed all of this, but then I deleted the footage. I don't even know, I'm not sure where it went. But I have a single screenshot that I used for the furniture plans for this chair. So don't blink, here it comes. Once those were done, I just glued in the new seat, reapplied some finish, and we were good as new. So here it is, the completed CNC carved seat dish. And I decided I'm just gonna call it a seat dish. Works for me. It really might not look that different from the hand carved versions that I do, but it's just one of those situations where I love the machine precision of the finished product. I think stuff like this is where having a CNC like the X-Carve just really makes sense. And I'm all about finding the places where handmade and CNC can come together. All right, 
I think I would consider that a success. If you like this chair and you want to try and build it yourself, I have plans available on my website. If you like my t-shirt, I have these available on my website. And if you like CNC routers, Inventables has those available on their website. Links to all of that is in the description. And of course, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it and I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, hasta la vista, baby. Thank you.